You're listening to Level Up Your Business, the podcast where we talk to hardworking business owners and leaders and help them solve real issues in real time. I'm your host, Sarah Frasca, restaurant owner, keynote speaker, and business coach. I've spent my career not only in corporate America, but also as an entrepreneur, carrying on my family's legacy through my restaurant. Now, a business coach and consultant, I'm helping other businesses to use creative problem solving and innovative thinking to drive lasting change. Stay tuned to hear some inspiring guidance that will help you to level up your business. Well, great. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our Level Up Your Business podcast. I'm Sarah Frasca with Point Northeast, and I'm joined today by a good friend and compadre in serving clients, and that is Darcy Neighbors from CIM Marketing Partners. Welcome, Darcy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here today. Really excited you're here. And yeah, and this is, I mean, gosh, such a, um, I don't know what the right word is, but we are such kind of um, compatible partners in serving. And so I'm just really excited to chat with you today and talk to you about kind of helping people to motivate growth for their businesses. Wonderful. That's what I love to do. That's what gets me up every day. So I know, I know it is, which is again, just why we are such kindred spirits. That's the word I was looking for. That's perfect. Yes. Well, Darcy is in Vegas, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about your business and how the heck did you build a marketing agency? It's been quite the journey, but let me start with, the fact that I've always, even from a young child, have had an entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember my first business was collecting aluminum cans on the beach, believe it or not, Sarah, near where you guys live. Yes. And I would I would go out and collect aluminum cans and make money. And then I got a paper route and then I babysit. I did everything where I could, you know, make money and save money. That's kind of what I always did. And I was um, an athlete growing up. And my mom always said, gosh, Darcy, if you'd put all the efforts you put into your athletics, into um, your school and to your business, you would be very successful. And so I'd I'd gone through, um, you know, high school and college, played volleyball in college and then got injured my third year in. And it was like, uh oh, now what am I going to do? Because my whole focus had been athletics. And then I had to kind of regroup. I taught myself, this really dates me, Sarah. I taught myself word processing back in the day, landed a job at Kennedy Space Center. Hmm. Um, And as a word processor, and within two months, they promoted me to a business analyst position where I tracked every line item that went on the shuttle. So I was keeping track of all that. I happened to be down at Cape Canaveral the day the Challenger blew up. And that was very devastating. So that was in January. And then in May, I'm like, It's kind of feeling like a morgue. It was very sad to be around there. Mm -hmm. So I had saved money every paycheck. I was a workaholic, six days a week, six to six. And I said, you know, I'm going to start my own retail business. So at age 24, I picked Mm -hmm. up and opened a shop in St. Augustine, Florida. Wow. And within 16 months, we had grown. We were ready to open another location. And I had a foreign gentleman walk into my shop one day and say, Darcy, I'd like to buy your business. And I'm like, what? It was really hard to get a location. So I said, I called my attorney and she said, you would be foolish not to take that. So I did. And then that's, you know, I I sold the company. Then I went back to school full time. My parents had moved to Vegas. I moved to Vegas. And within that short period of time, I landed a, a, a job at a bank. And then shortly after that, finished my degree at UNLV, started working as the first marketing director ever hired by a law firm in Las Vegas. Wow. And it was a boutique estate planning firm, worked there for five and a half years. And then I had three attorneys start asking me to moonlight for them. And I'm like, I don't feel comfortable doing this. My daughter was one. And I said, I'm just going to throw up my hands and try this and start my own company again. Because I knew after I sold my retail business, I wanted to have another business, but I knew it would never be retail again. <laughs> it had to be service. So I started the company in 1996 and 
you know, grew it out of my house, had five people working in my house. And then it just kind of slowly grew from there. And, um, you know, 27 years later, here we are. And we have now clients all over the country. And it's also all in the services arena. So professional services, 70% are, are, are attorney clients. Um, but I just have a passion. You know, when I was playing volleyball, I was a setter. So I always felt like I was this one setting up the, the spiker for the kill. I do yeah. that in business now. I set the companies up for the kill. And I get up every day and I love what I do. And I get up and play and, you know, have fun growing companies. It's really great. Yeah. Gosh, and I, I didn't know that I, your background at the Kennedy Space Center and the St. Augustine Retail Shop, I mean, yeah. that I just learned so much and my jaw is dropping because you've oh. done so many things and that's really impressive. Um, well, Sarah, what, what comes down to is that I've got a drive, uh, I think a competitive drive with myself mm -hmm. and always have had, you know, my mom had four kids and she's like, I don't know where you came from. Cause you just have this, this drive that, you know, she never quite understood, but you know, when you find something in life that you're really, really passionate about, it's, it doesn't, it's not work anymore. It's, it's play and it's gratifying. And, um, you know, now at the stage of my career, you get to the point where you say, I've had a great amount of success, but now what am I doing significantly in my life? And what does that look like going forward? Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of the stage I'm in right now. Fun. Okay. So CIM Marketing Partners, tell us a little bit about the agency itself. I mean, you talked about the makeup of the clients, but how many folks, is it just the one location? Like everybody's kind of in the same zone? Yeah, we are located in Vegas in a kind of a hot pocket in the, you know, downtown Summerlin, which is a beautiful area. Um, we have 16 on our team. Um, I have been as high as 18 before the crash in 2007. Um, that was a fun dip that we had to take and come back up. But um, we have a hybrid model, always have had as far as working from home. We were fortunate to be working one day a week from home and rotating before COVID. And then COVID happened and it was just a natural that we had. So we probably, you know, I, any given day, we probably have half of the company in the office, depending on if we have a client meeting or um, a team meeting. Um, but we have, we're full service. There are a few things that we you know, contract out for, but we love to handle a relationship if we possible from A to Z, mm -hmm. because we can keep all of the players and all of the talent involved so that we don't have, you know, one agency out there doing, you know, the website and then we've got another agency out here doing social and PR. So we try to as much as possible, although we do work with a lot of companies who have other agencies and we do very well with that. But there's a, a many of clients that stay with us. We've had clients with us for 23, 24 years. And in marketing, that says a lot because if you are not getting results, you're out of there. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able to grow a lot of companies and, and, you know, really grow their brands over the years. So, um, yeah, have a really incredible team. I mean, it's, it's fun again, you know, I think you and I are cut from a very similar cloth. I, yes. I am uber competitive, like I'm so driven, but I think you and I, and hopefully this is the case, you know, for me, but I know it is for you, you have this humility and this, um, you know, like starting from your humanity as you serve. And so that's, again, one of these reasons why you've had clients for 20 some years. I mean, it really is. So yeah, it's, you, yeah, it's a credit to just, again, you know, the service first mentality and your team is built with that. Um, right. Because, you know, you, you know, I'm only as good as the people I've surrounded myself with, period. I mean, I have got my creative director has been with me. 26 of my 27 years. I mean, I, when I first started working with her, she spoke very little English. And now, I mean, she has just blown me away with her talent and commitment um, mm -hmm. to me. And I've been committed to her, but, you know, we really are only as good as our, our team and our last performance. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Um, you know, I was going to mention just so that our listeners can understand our connection because, you know, we do go back a little while yeah. and I don't honestly remember how we met, met, but 
you were my agency of choice when I built the fireproof consulting firm. And Correct. yeah, and it's so fun because, you know, I was able to be your client. I was yeah. able to see from the, you know, when you talked about the A to Z, I think it's important to recognize you guys were with me as I built the strategy for the brand right. and down to the execution of building the logo, building the website, building the social media, doing any okay. collateral. I mean, all of it. Yes. And, yeah. And so that it's pretty fun. And, and um, so now you, we're helping a lot of clients. Now we're yes. actually you know, bringing in folks. And, and again, there's a lot of law firms and yes. some really, I love, I, Sarah, I love attorneys. I, I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's the challenge or their competitiveness. I mean, I, yeah. I absolutely love working with, you know, attorneys. It's, it's just a, a bunch of fun. I mean, yep. you've got some egos to deal with, which I kind of find challenging. Um, and, and I love that. And what's really amazing is when you get a, a conversation or you have an email that a client says, Oh my gosh, Darcy, you were right. The, the business is just booming. It's a tsunami. I mean, I'm trying to keep up with it. I'm like, that's what I love to hear. Cause that's our goal is to just, you know, continue to grow their companies. Totally. And you know, the other funny thing um, is that I, I just, I mean, not only do I appreciate your work and your, you know, kind of the core of your values and things like that, but you guys are using the EOS, kind of the entrepreneurial operating system. And I don't coach in that um, particular, you know, one lane any longer, but I think you are, you know, you've got a great foundation. You've got a great team that is um, able to really support clients, especially because, you know, I think the majority of businesses out there are not well organized. They're not run as a business. True. You know, so I do find that the attorneys we work for are eager for a little bit of that kind of foundation building. They want to have a more um, simplified, you know, kind of regimented business instead Absolutely. of running a willy nilly law firm or whatever business they Absolutely. have. Absolutely. And many of them, you know, they, I think, no, I don't know if anybody's, you know, born knowing what they need to do as far as an entrepreneur. And there are some people that just kind of get it more than others. And I, I don't typically find that a lot of our clients, especially in the attorney world, they're, they're great attorneys. They're, they may not be the best business people. They may not be the best marketers, but they know if they're smart, they know how to bring the right team together and, yeah. you know, find the right people to, you know, help them grow. Mm -hmm. um, but I, the ones that do not see that vision, um, they flounder. And yeah. um, we, we've seen that, but the ones that do get it and, you know, have that foundational component that you're talking about, it's just, it's amazing. We've had clients that we've helped grow from, you know, 8 million to 50 million. And you don't grow that without a huge foundation and, and, and a plan or a process in place. I so, agree. Yeah. Well, okay. So you talked about the A to Z support, and I want to hover on that for a minute because I will come across law firms and professional service organizations or businesses that say they need help getting the phone to ring, right? They need help building their client base, um, customers, et cetera. And some of them do not have an in-house marketing leader. And there are times when it is appropriate. But one of the things I love about sending them to you is that you can help them in that A to Z. You can help them to set the brand, the strategy, the calendar of content, all the way down to actually executing. So what right. I describe to them usually is, if they hire an agency that will take good care of them, like your firm, then they get access to a whole host of people yes. instead of having to pay the salaries for 10 True. people, they pay for one agency that brings the content and all the people. That is, you you said that perfectly. And, and in today's world, it's just too costly to have specialists in every single marketing, you know, discipline, I guess you could say, because it's just, to, it's just impossible to have one person that has that skill set. You know, you don't have the same, like in my team, I have great digital marketers that would be horrific when it comes to content. 
<laughs> so you've just got to, and the beauty of that is that you're not having to pay for that person full time, pay benefits, manage them. All of that, you know, takes time and money. So that's, that is really the full service marketing um, approach. And we serve probably 70% of our clients we serve in that capacity for them. Yes. Um, so it is, and I'm really cautious trying to find those right fit people um, that, you know, can fit our culture, but also fit the culture. And I'm very careful with who do I put on an account because there is a personality, there's a culture involved with that client. So we're really uh, careful with how we match those up because um, mm -hmm. that's, that's critical. It and is. and you grow with them. I mean, we've had clients where, you know, we might have started with them when they were doing when they were at eight or 10 million. Well, now they're, you know, pushing the 25 or 30 million mark. It may take a different team. It might take a different plug in of, of someone else with a different skill set. So it's not that we have one person. I mean, there's a at any given time there's five or six of our team touching an account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the other reason why I think an agency can be really helpful um, and, and I'll just give a little example of my background. So I was at General Mills, which, you know, towards the end, I was actually managing the digital marketing program for a couple of the businesses, a couple of the brands. And the funny thing is, I would not consider myself even close to a digital marketing expert any longer. And my point is, it changes on almost a daily basis. And there's no way, unless you have a specialist, that you can keep up, in my opinion. Uh, what do you think? I one thousand percent agree with you. We have been drinking for from a fire hose for decades at this point. I mean, the stuff when I started the company back in nineteen ninety six, we had none of this. Yeah. And now it is coming at us so fast. Now you now you layer AI on top of it. Right. We're we're going. Who knows where this is all going to go? Which is which is fun for me because I love the challenge. I love the learning. And it's like, okay, where are we going to be, you know, three or five years from now? That's pretty exciting to me to think about. Um, and I have to surround myself with the people on the team that can can keep it up, can keep staying up on abreast of everything. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it's it's quite it's quite fun and challenging. I've been incredibly blessed mm -hmm. to have had a career and continue to have a career um, like I do. I do want to address your question earlier, though, Sarah, about where do we go from here? Right. Um, you know, I think as an entrepreneur, we, we have, we go through peaks and valleys and it depends on, you know, uh, the economy, different, uh, you know, things that you might have a great employee that leaves you for a better opportunity. So there are things you have to go through and adapt. You have to be very adaptable as an entrepreneur. But what was interesting is about a year ago, um, we, I read a book called U Squared. Um, and very simple book you, it's so simple, but it's all around the concept of taking a quantum leap. Hmm. So that resonated with me so strongly that I had my entire team read that book and at our retreat last December asked that every single person write down what their quantum leap was. And then I shared with what, what my quantum leap was and talk about transformational. I mean, it gets everybody excited about, okay, we're not just getting up every day and doing the same thing over and over. What are we going to do to take that quantum leap? Um, and it may be different for everyone, but what I found was that many of the team, um, cause I wanted to share mine first. So they knew where I was, where my head was going. Many of theirs came back supporting what my quantum leap was, but it was a quantum leap for them. So, um, it's pretty exciting, you know, because you can't you just never want to get stagnant as a business owner. You have to always be evolving and moving and challenging yourself and challenging your people. So that has been kind of where we're going. And just to share with you what my quantum leap was, we have multiple revenue streams. But my 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 quantum leap was to double retainer monthly retainer dollars in three years. That's substantial. In a, in a business like ours, that's very substantial. And but my also said a personal one. And my personal was that I was going to get to a point where I can take two weeks off a month. I've been taking one week off a month so that I can actually enjoy 
my freedom that you're trying to create as an entrepreneur. Cause I think a lot of people get, you know, so stuck in being, you know, the business is controlling them. They're not controlling the business. So mm-hmm. the idea is like, okay, how do I get to a point where I'm taking two weeks off a month doing what I love to do, but also volunteering and doing things that, you know, my heart wants to do, not just my, my business mind wants to do. So when I told the team like that, they were like, Oh my gosh, how is she going to be gone? And they're just adapting to it. So, um, but that's the fun stuff is to, you know, challenge, you know, yourself and challenge your team. So you don't get stagnant. That's great. Tell me how it's going. Are you taking two weeks off a month? I'm at, I'm, I'm still at one. Um, But I am getting ready to take two weeks off in in June. I'm going to ride across uh, my bike across Nebraska, which will be fun. Um, But when I do take the time and I took I took two weeks off um, in March to go on a cruise with my my oldest daughter. So I'm getting some I might say once a quarter I'm taking my two weeks off. Um, So I'm getting there. And the financial side, we're hitting our numbers. I mean, we're getting there if we continue how we're doing. And it's just mind blowing to me how Mm -hmm. you kind of set set this um, intention Mm -hmm. and then you will get there. So, and I've always been a goal setter. I mean, every quarter I set. There's your setter again. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Gosh. That could be the title of your book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've already written one book. Um, Yeah. Nine elements to ignite your growth. Um, And it's just a, a, a simple book that if anybody's interested, they can contact me and I'll send them a copy of it. But um, it's just talking about the main nine elements that we feel um, Hmm. will get a company positioned uh, for growth. Cool. Um, So, yeah, but I definitely want to write another book one day. But um, right now I'm in the quantum leap of growing the company. So great. That's really great. Well, um, you know, a lot of and I would say entrepreneurs and business owners kind of, you know, sometimes forget about themselves. And the business, they are working for the business. And so I have to do a lot of convincing that the business should also serve the owner. Correct. You know, and and I would say there are different motives. I mean, honestly, I don't think every motive or, you know, kind of the way that the business serves the owner is the same. Sometimes it can be financial. Yes. Sometimes it can be other things. Um, you, you know, my personal background with my restaurant is... Right the legacy of my family. It was a way for me to, you know, kind of serve my community in the way that my mom did. And, kind uh, of, you know, so anyway, love- yeah. And, and so it wasn't a get rich scheme, right. It was right. done for a different reason, but anyway, my point being, um, I'm really kind of, you know, happy that you shared the story of how, you know, through the ages, you lean in and there's kind of the give and take with the business. And now it's like, all right, I've got a new ask of the business Mm -hmm. and a new life stage. I, I, I can't remember if you have grandchildren. No, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You had had a wedding. I had, yeah, I had, I have uh, two daughters. um, Okay. All right. And uh, we've had, we had a wedding about three years ago actually this coming up month, but, um, yeah, grandbabies are on the horizon. So I'm looking forward to that. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I just, it's so life has just been fun. Now don't get me wrong. There were some very, very hard stages within the business. I mean, when that, when that economy crashed, I had a perfect storm. I mean, it was, my husband was a civil engineer, all the civil engineering jobs were gone. We had a client that, was that was doing illegal things. They took me for $360,000. And then you had the economy crash. It was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to manage this? And there were days I went in and it was like, I just feel like I'm on a free fall. How much further am I going to fall? When am I going to hit the ground? And but that makes you stronger for your future tests. Because I've been tested since then, but it hasn't felt as overwhelming as something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's just entrepreneurship. It's just, I think everybody thinks they want to be an entrepreneur, but they don't realize that it takes a lot of grit. It takes a lot of work. Um, but it also takes a lot of passion um, to get up every day and, you know, help other people do their job and encourage and motivate and lead other people. Mm-hmm. So, but I find that very challenging. Man. Yeah. And it's, um, 
it's a beautiful story. I didn't know you had that kind of perfect storm come together. And oh, no. gosh, yeah. it was, well, I'll never forget, Sarah, the Tell one me. day where I had to come in and I was bleeding so bad. I came in and I pulled my team together and I said, guys, I have to lay up everybody except three people, me included as one of those three. It was devastating. Um, but it, it was, and I wasn't the only one dealing with it. It had, I mean, I could relate to other business owners more so after that, you know, that are going through uh, challenges, but um, yeah, that was very difficult. Yes, I can imagine. Oh boy. Um, talk a little bit about being a mompreneur. Oh gosh. <laughs> I, should, I should have you talk to my girls. Um you know, I th- I don't think they knew anything different. I mean, I've just always worked and my my mom was like the perfect stay-at-home mom and 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 she had a hard time for a long time understanding me. And then finally, you know, I think my kids were 7 and 10 or wh- or whatever, and she goes, "You know, I think I understand now. This is what you need. You have to do this in order to be the best mom you can be." So, um but she helped along the way, but they all, and they they both work really, really hard in their own rights, but they never wanted to have anything to do with my business, um, which I understand because that's not their passion. Um, but it's been a challenge. You have to have a partner. My husband and I complement each other very, very well. I mean, in today's world, it's very hard for two people to work full time. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that there was give and take on that front. Um, mm-hmm. The beauty is I hardly ever missed a game, a dance recital, anything. You just juggle and you do what you have to do. Um, again, it was very hard, but um, I, again, wouldn't change it for for anything. It's just been, and that's what I try to encourage people now that are moms in my organization or other clients that we work with is, I don't know if we'll, we ever find the balance, Sarah, I don't know if we ever find the balance. You just do what you have to do that day and get through that day Mm -hmm. Um, and try to find the pockets of joy where you can and try to be present at that moment with that daughter or, or I was always good about taking every single or every one of my daughters I'll take on, on a trip or we'd have a date. So we always had that focus time together. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's kind of, I don't know if they truly understand, you know, what I do even to this day, but um, (laughs) that's cute. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's funny. I have a similar kind of, I would say my kids also probably would say they didn't know anything different. It just was, you know, they were brought into the world with a working mom who was passionately evolving forward. And I think that there's something to be said for that. You just get through the next thing. You just figure out that week. Uh, right. So it's like this, and we have this, and you just navigate it. And my husband also is a tremendous partner with the juggle. I mean, yes. it's it's um, and it's a dance. I mean, yeah. it's a, and it's a it's a dance, and you 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 end up getting through it. But when you look back on it. I mean, my husband and I will now say, how did we ever do it when we were <laughs> young? Um, but the beauty now is that I'm able to go on a 13-day cruise with one. I can go to New Zealand and hike mountains with the other one. So the the business has allowed me the freedom and the finances to be able to do that now. That's and um, just wouldn't change that for the world. Oh. It's been very fun. Yeah, and that's amazing. And I do feel like... You know, even though there are moments where I would say this was at General Mills as well as when I was a mompreneur, but, you know, when I'm at work, I'm worried about the kids. And when I'm with the kids, I'm worried about work, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. But there's also this beauty to showing your children that they can do it all. They can be whoever it is they want to be. And so anyway, I think there's... I totally agree with you on that. I mean, I'll never forget. I was at my, my daughters were 15 and 17. I can still visualize this. And we, they were at my office doing their homework one night and they go, mom, we need to talk to you. And I'm like, oh man, is one of them pregnant? Something, I don't know what's going on. And 
they said, mom, we just want you to know, we don't want to have anything to do with your business. Oh, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Why? Um, and the comment from my oldest was, well, we don't want to work as hard as you've had to work. Mm. And I was like, that's quite the comment. But now in retrospect, they both work so hard in what they do. It's just because they found what they, they love to do. And I always said when I, when they were growing up, I said, I just pray that one day you find a career that you feel like you get up and go play at every day. And it's yes. not a job so that yes. it's something that you enjoy. That's yeah. wonderful. I yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, it's again, uh, it's what we do for the majority of our day. Yes. Uh, we better like it. We better have fun. <laughs> Absolutely. And I wanted to also go back. You'd asked me about what maybe sets our company apart. I do want to cover that really quick, Sarah. Um, really what what transformed our company, I think, makes us a different agency is about 20 plus years ago, um, we developed a concept called the Strategic Marketing Summit. And it's a trademark um, concept that we use because people will come in and they're, they want to try this, they want to try that. And, they, and there's no strategy. So our goal was before we start any kind of relationship with a client, we have to determine what the strategy is. So we go through a four hour program and we, we talk about where they've been, where they're going, where they want to be one, three and five years from now. And then we come back with a really solid strategy, recommendations, um, plan so that they can get there. But I, I can't tell you how many companies have been burned and firms have been burned by marketing companies. And then they hire us and it's a new experience and they've never experienced anything like that. So we kind of have to clean up the mess of how other people have, um, you know, I don't want to say screwed people, but have, um, it's a very difficult, um, business. And I think there's, especially in the digital world, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors and, you know, we just don't do that. It's got to be strategy first, creative after. So yeah. that's how we set it up. I'm, I'm glad you said that because again, you know, we both serve a lot of law firms and professional service organizations that I think sometimes they get, um, maybe hypnotized by the fancy, you know, shiny things and the new term and the, and, you know, I, I, I find it to be that the smartest people I know speak the simplest. And it's like, I'm not trying to pull one over on you. I'm mm -hmm. trying to actually make a connection through words so that you understand and I understand. And so I think when I have worked with your team. It does get to this, again, just very human, very um, comfortable level of like, oh, I know exactly what they're doing. I know exactly mm -hmm. what the plan is. And so, yeah, I, I have seen a lot of clients burned as well, Darcy, because mm -hmm. again, the industry, the marketing agency industry is ripe with yeah snake oil salesman, okay. unfortunately. I, I agree. And that's, that's so hard to, to follow, but at the same time, it's good to follow when we come in and yeah. uh, I mean, the other day we did a, a diversified marketing portfolio for a new client and, you know, that's just our detailed budget, but he sat back in his chair and he goes, I just want to cry. <laughs> I'm like, he goes, I can't believe you guys have, have turned this around and you've made this simple for me. Mm -hmm. And 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 they don't know where they're spending money. I mean, when you put it all into one thing, and it, that's just mind blowing to me. But um, they get so busy doing what they do, they don't have time to do kind of what we bring to the table. So yeah, yeah. okay. So I think that's a good moment for us to have. Um, how can people contact you? And I know that in the background, Allison's ready, but um, yeah. Um, definitely visit our website, cimmp.com. Um, we're CIM Marketing Partners based out of Las Vegas. That's my cell phone on there. Feel free to give me a call. Um, don't give that out often, but for you, Sarah, for sure. <laughs> You've been such a great partner um, with me, and I appreciate that. So, and, you know, if, if anybody's interested in just having a conversation, you know, they don't, if they're not even ready and they just want to have a conversation about where they are, where they want to go, and if they want to take that quantum leap, 
we've got many clients that we're working with that are taking their own quantum leap. So um, would love to be able to help any of, of those people and listeners that you might have today. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And again, I, I am like a um, walking billboard for your business because I've been a client and thank now you. I get to work with you partnering to help support clients. Yeah. And so, thank you, Sarah. You've been amazing. You, you know, you, you find gems in this world and you're one of them, um, you know, and I, I just appreciate that when you do connect with someone and you have like-minded values and um, clients, there's, there's nothing better um, than relationships. I mean, when it comes down to building companies and, and being an entrepreneur, it is who you surround yourself with um, that may be better than you are in something. But as long as you can kind of come together, that then everybody, everybody wins. And it's a um, it's a very gratifying place to live. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, I just, I, I mean, you're, you're amazing. You're an amazing mompreneur and an amazing leader for your organization. I hope you'll tell all Thank of you. your friends hello within your I will. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And yeah. I, I can't thank you enough for having me on, on your podcast. And oh. I wish you continued success. You you deserve that, Sarah. You thank really you. do a lot of great things for people. So Well, we have an awful lot of fun, just like yeah. you. You know, it's so fun to see people thrive and enjoy the businesses that yeah. are the fruits of their labor. I mean, it it has to be that two-way street. And if it's not, they better call one of us to figure yeah. out how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> how to get there exactly well we we know we can take we can we know we can take them there that's well, the, the beauty of what we do so yep good well i just appreciate you being on i yeah. can't wait to come out to vegas to visit you soon or see you on the road you know i know, you know we'll, we'll, and i'm sure we'll see each other soon for <laughs> sure and i gotta come back down to ponte Vedra sometime and look for shark's teeth on the beach i, I mean that was my favorite place to look for shark's teeth when i lived oh. there so it's so fun. And I, I yeah. love it as well. Actually, I have a little dish that has all my findings. Yeah. My kids <laughs> love that. Well, thank you again for being just such a wonderful friend and colleague and compadre in serving these clients. And I am here and I hope that if a client or a potential client is out there and they need help, now they know where to go for their marketing yeah. Thank you. It is a strategy all the way down to the execution. So all the way. thank you, yeah. Sarah. I appreciate Good. it again. All right. And thank you to the folks listening. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Um, and if you need some help taking your business up and to the right, you know where to find us. So thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Level Up Your Business with me, Sarah Frasca. If you have a problem in your business that's keeping you up at night, please join us in a future episode so we can help get you unstuck. Just click in the link in the show notes and send us a message. Please remember, stay innovative, friends.